Hey, welcome to a special premiere. This is Eric Waite, Eric Waite Whiskey Studies, and I got a special guest for this premiere. We actually recorded this a, a week ago uh, at a time that was more convenient because there's about eight hours in between us. I'm here in California, and Alan, the whiskey friend, is in England. So why don't you go ahead and say your own hello to everyone, Alan. Hi there, Eric. How are you doing? You okay? Yeah, doing pretty good. So, um, so we've got... Uh, we're both doing a Lagavulin. This is for Isla Month, March, uh, excuse me, February 2019, uh, doing Isla Month. So uh, invited Alan to come on. Alan's a fairly recent uh, channel, The Whiskey Friend. If you haven't subscribed to Alan, if you haven't seen any of his videos, I'll put a link to his channel at the end of this uh, video. Um, and so you definitely want to check him out and subscribe. And I'm really looking forward to getting to know Alan a little bit better. So, uh, Alan, why don't you tell me a little about yourself? So, where are you originally from and where do you live now? Well, I'm originally from Glasgow a uh, long, long time ago. But I've been in Manchester, England, uh, probably for the last 30 years. You don't but sound I like you're from Manchester. I get up to Scotland quite a bit, uh, do a little traveling up. I've still got family up there. Um, and obviously, I take every chance to get as much whiskey. There's more, there's more access to whiskey up there than there is down here, so... I tend to go back as often as I can. Well, when I was in London, uh, there seemed to be no shortage. There was a lot of things you could get. I could get in London that I couldn't get here, can't get here in the United States. And when I was there with Jason Whiskey Wise, was really quite amazed at what's available not only in whiskey shops like the Whiskey Exchange, but in whiskey bars. Uh, so I don't know how far are you from. How, my geography is bad. How far are you from uh, London? Uh, well, I'm probably between, it's about halfway between London and Glasgow, so it's, I could go either way. Uh, Manchester's, Manchester's another big city, it's just as big as Glasgow, but um, there's not as much, there's a few places you can get some whiskey, but there's, there's, there's not that many. Uh, there's not, there's, there's probably one or two dedicated whiskey bars uh, in Manchester, uh, whereas in Glasgow, yeah, there's obviously there's quite a few up there in Glasgow. So Cal I more to frequent when I tend to go up for a visit, that's where I tend to spend most of my time is in the whiskey bars. So California is the, like, for example, is the number one wine state in the United States, huge producer of wine, but not everybody here is into wine. There's a lot of people in fact, out, who are not into wine. Um, what would you say in terms of your interest is whiskey sort of reflective of people? Well, living where, where I am, there's, there's not a lot of people into whiskey. Um, that's why I tend to kind of head home a wee bit more often than, than I would. Than, than, well, I, I do it as often as I can because there's, there's not so much here as, as a whiskey kind of culture. Uh, hmm. There's more, there's, don't get me wrong, there's lots of nightlife, there's lots of great nightlife, but as regards with people are into whiskey, then there's, I've, I've not come across that many down here. That's kind of surprising. So, especially since, um, let's say, whiskey tubers. Um, you know, there are more whiskey tubers in Canada than there does seem to be in Scotland. Absolutely. I've, I've got quite a few of them following me from Canada. I think I'm quite big in Canada, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> um, so have you always well, been... The one guy that I get here is, is Whiskey Wednesday. He lives in Manchester. Who, who is that? Whiskey Phil from Whiskey Wednesday. Okay, okay. He's from Manchester. Okay. Yep, yep. Uh, I grew up in California, but I didn't with a lot of wine. But I didn't get into wines until the late 1990s. I was probably already 30 years old. So, how long have you been uh, in, into whiskey? Well, how long have you got, Eric? Uh, <laughs> bit, what happens with me, Eric? I started. I've only been drinking whiskey for about two or three years now. Um, oh, because I started out collecting it. I started out as a whiskey collector. Um, and that was about 2007 I started doing that. Uh, I heard an article on the radio which was saying that the banks had all crashed, there was no money getting made anywhere, nowhere to put your savings. Uh, and the two things that came up was gold and whiskey. Um, so I wasn't really into gold that much. So I, I went out that day and I bought my first bottle of whiskey uh, and I paid £145 for it which was a Talisker 25, and that was the start of my collection. So I started just doing auctions, just collecting everything I could collect, um, and I actually built up a really, really big 
whiskey collection. Um, and it was only over the last couple of years that I started getting on YouTube and watching some reviews. Don't get me wrong, I've been watching Ralphie for many, many years. Uh, I've just watched him and I got a few tips what to buy from Ralphie uh, rather than what to drink. Um, so I'd, as I say, I'd collected a massive, massive amount. I had about 400, 500 bottles of whiskey uh, and I wasn't drinking any of them. Uh, I used to get a lot of gifts, Glen Fiddock 12s and Glen Levitt 12s and all that kind of stuff and that's what I was drinking uh, up until about probably about three years ago. So my whiskey, getting into the better stuff has only been about three years. But collecting it's probably so that's, been about that's, a, years that's amazing. So you started off buying whiskey as uh, as a as a uh, a collecting Investing. for financial reasons, not because you were into drinking it. No, I never so touched how, it. How long were you collecting, and then at what point did you say, "Okay, I'm gonna start drinking some of this"? I started collecting probably about two thousand late two thousand seven. Started drinking it about three years ago. That's amazing. I've never. That's a very. That's a. That's the most unique. That's the most unique story I've ever heard. It's I've incredible. never heard. Yeah, no, I was, I never just heard of that. money. I was just making. A, I was making a fortune. To be honest, I was making loads and loads of money at it. <laughs> so uh, and then all of a sudden, I started. I think I, I drunk. What was the bottle? I tell you, the bottle I drunk that kind of got me drinking more of it, and it was an Aaron Amaroni cask. Started drinking that. Uh, then I paid. I paid Aaron a visit. One cold November. Uh, not the best place. I took the wife there for her 50th birthday. Uh, wasn't the best place to take it. Saving Grace was the distillery because uh, we spent a bit of time in there. And it was the Aaron Amaroni cask that I started drinking it. Uh, did the tour, did do a, a little private session with the guys at the distillery. And ever since then, I've been drinking it. So I've been cracking a lot more bottles open lately than, than I've been for years. <laughs> Speaking of drinking, uh, I just took. I have a. Uh, I have one of my uh, coins on, sitting on top of mine, so I just took a sip. Uh, so, have you got a coin? Cool cool well, really? All right, there you go. Thank God for one of those. Yep, that's genuine artificial gold. Yeah, it looks. Yeah, <laughs> I think I'll stick to collecting whiskey than collecting this gold. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, I know the people who are watching, they're, they're going to be like, they're not drinking. All they're doing is talking. So I want to do a little bit of sipping. So what do you get on the, uh, what do you get on the nose on this one? Uh, the, I've got the Lagavulin 12. Lots of vanilla. Very creamy. Very what? Very creamy. Oh, creamy. Very so creamy. Well, I'll add. Maybe I'll add subtitles later on to the to the video. So be well, uh, you might you might need them to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, lots of salt as well, and it's very salty and very brainy. And it's got the iodine note, so it's it's typical Lagavulin. So my I so this is a neck pour. This is the 2016 200 anniversary. Um, Alan has the 2017, which I've tasted, but I don't have a bottle of it. Um, so this is a neck pour, so it's sort of, and there's some differences. Even though I've tasted them both, um, this is creamy. It's medium in terms of smokiness. That brininess is definitely uh, there. The fruit's kind of underneath it. There is an umami kind of character to it, a savory umami character to it. Yeah, this this one's a little bit savory as well, isn't it? I get a wee bit of quince. Have you ever had like a uh, a candied quince with a glaze on it? I get a little yeah, bit of that. No, I'm not getting that. I'm, course, getting, I'm getting lots of fruit, lots of orchard fruits. Uh, I've got it's very lemony. Got some lemon oil. So yours is below the neck, in terms of yours is past the shoulder, and then it's a different year. Yeah. So are you familiar with these the 16 and the 17 enough to what do you think I've, would be the I've difference? Had both. I'm trying to recollect the 16. This. They are they are slightly different. Uh, this this one for me seems a bit fruity and a bit more lemon. Have you this got one, lemon on yours? Yeah, definitely some lemon, but um, it's almost like a lemon pie, a lemon custard, and it's um, the fruit is really up front. 
Um, it's really, really. I, I, I'm. It's pretty much vanilla up front, Eddie. It's heavier than vanilla on this. So I'm really, really enjoying this. Um, and that the smoke, the smoke's like a, it's like a kind of campfire smoke. But it's really interwoven. I think it's really interwoven really well. It's not. You don't have to fight to get to the fruit notes. It's it, the the fruit is right in, right in there. Yeah. Oh no, this is this is really well balanced. So, uh, so you've been into collecting whiskeys for about ten years. Then about three yeah. years ago, you started drinking them. What made yeah. you want to start doing videos? Well, I was. Um, I think more and more. I used to, as I say, I used to watch Ralphie for years. Um, and then it just as you started strolling through, more guys were coming on, so there's more YouTubers were were coming on to it. So I just started look following a few more of them. Uh, I paid a visit to Scotland probably sometime last year. Met up with Roy Acquaviti. Uh, I had a few drinks with him, and then I went back and I thought I'll give it a go. So I only did it really for a bit of fun to begin with, just to see how it went and whether there would be any good at it. Or, but, and one of the main reasons, Eric, is, as I say earlier, there's not a lot of people around here that are into whiskey. So most of my time really is on YouTube and I'm talking to myself while I'm drinking away. So I thought I may as well talk and let somebody else, see if anybody else spoke back. So look out for some comments. So I, yeah, it went okay. Um, so I've been enjoying it ever since I started it. That, so it's really nice to um, – so I'm in California, not a big whiskey state, more into wine, challenging to find a community to be part of. So all my whiskey friends um, are I met through YouTube, through the, the, my YouTube channel. Even some of the locals, most of them who, you know, from the Bay Area, I still only know them from YouTube. We haven't met them. The only one I've met is Santa Cruz. I met him. Uh, actually, at a distillery down in Santa Cruz, um, but yeah. So most of my whiskey friends are people that I've met through the YouTube channel, and just over this last year, I'm starting to meet them in person, getting on planes. So I met Scotch Test Dummies, and of course Tom Marr was there, and Jason Coates. A lot of people who who from the the people we know from the chats were there. Um, a couple guys from uh, Scotch Four Dummies were there. Then I flew out to Indianapolis, got to meet some guys there, and if everything goes right. Late uh, next week, the end of next week, I'll be meeting up with Bill, the Whiskey Dictionary, um, and we're either going to do some live or do some recording, something like that. So it's and, and yet, so I'm meeting people around the country and around the world, including as you said, Roy Aquavite and Jason Whiskey Wise when I was there. So it's really, really cool. Even if you're not looking to get a big channel, whatever else, it's nice to join the community. Of whiskey too, and get to know each there other. There seems to be a lot more, a lot more going on over there than there is over here. Yeah, more of these get-togethers. Uh, yeah, I notice there's quite a few of them over there. Um, I would just like to see maybe if some of the guys over here I could maybe get together and do something over this neck of the woods. Because uh, all the gatherings that I'm seeing, they're all over in over in your end. Well, it takes it takes it takes you know to initiate it. Someone's got to come Absolutely. up with a plan and idea. Um, and to rally, you know, get the people together, make the arrangements and jump to all that. Um, and then take the initiative. You know, I think generally speaking, Americans are much more forward. Hi, I'm Eric. I'm from America. You know, <laughs> and, and, you know, and people in England are like, uh, who's this crazy chap? You know, yeah. uh, you know, so we're my, we're t generally speaking, not everybody. We tend to be more. Hi, how you doing? I'm, my name's Eric and I'm into whiskey. And people are like, OK, you mean low daddy. Okay. But pardon? You mean Americans are loud? Yes, just a wee bit. Yeah. Particularly I have to say that I've noticed. To, particularly our president. <laughs> oh, well, okay. But he's took a bit of a back step today, hasn't he? So, yeah. Anyway, so I think that while you can be overbearing, a person can be overbearing, it helps to be a little bit more forward and to initiate and to, and to do meetups as well. Yeah. So... Um, one of the things I'm, you know, I'm already planning my trip back to uh, London. I'll be landing on the f July 4th, our Independence Day from you guys. <laughs> uh, it'll be well, there for three days, and then I'll head up. Just to another day, Eric. <laughs> hey, 200 years of history. It's been a while. <laughs> yeah. 
So, but my going back eleven generations, my great 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 grandfather was from Wales, actually. Uh, but we've been here since the 1650s. But anyway, so I'm hoping uh, when I come out to London, I meet up with Jason Whiskey Wise, that I can meet up with you as well. Uh, Absolutely. Not there, then uh, but when are you planning to go up to Scotland? So I would go up to Scotland on Saturday morning, July 6th. Yeah, no, that, that weekend could be a possibility. Okay. I could, I could drive up that weekend. Okay. So that's Saturday. Uh, I don't have anything planned at the moment. But maybe just a big get together at a at a bar. Go to the copper. Um, yeah, no, I can I can catch up with you on that. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to catch up with you, have a drama with you, person. Okay. This is great face to face, but I'd like to be properly face to face. So you've got two glasses there. What do you, what do you, what else have you got there in your glass? Oh no, I started with um, I had a little kill here in twelve first. Just get me ready for this one. Okay, so that's you. So yeah, sort of a warm up dram. I tell you what I do have as well. I do have another. I've got a sample from Whiskey Wednesday of the Lagavulin Seventeen. I think his is his is a little bit uh, further down the bottle than mine was. So I'd be interested to see what this is going to taste like as well. So, so I might try that later. Well, it looks like you got a whole line up there ready for a night of, of drinking whiskey. I've got a few. Got loads of islands here, mate. Got loads of islands. <laughs> <laughs> got islands coming out my heels. I thought just in case you wanted to try a few, then we could try a few, but we'll stick with the lag of one. But we're going to taste this. So that's, you You got the Kilcarian right now? No, no, this is the lag of one. So I've only Kilcarin had Kilcarian twice. I've already had the Kilcarian. Oh, okay. I've only had Kilcarian twice, and last time was at the Dornock Castle at the bar uh, at the yeah. Dornock Castle. So I'm how a often, fan of Kilkerran, mate. Pardon? I'm a big fan of Kilkerran. Oh, yeah. So I'll be going there. Uh, in, in part of my next trip is to go to Campbellton and visit oh, the three yeah. distilleries there. Yeah. And yeah, then, they're, they're all great distilleries. Glen Scotia is great. And then and on, the, Strength Bank is fantastic. Uh, you and, can't go wrong in Campbellton. And then next year, if, if everything goes well, I plan to go back there to spend a week working at at Springbank. Um, oh, they have nice. a, but you got to sign up like, like a year in advance because it sells out pretty quick. To spend a whole week yeah. there just working, and because I think I'll learn more by having hands on experience uh, rather than just reading from books and videos and I can just get get some hands on experience. I'm looking forward to that. Absolutely. Well, you, you probably could have picked a better distillery because you get you get to learn loads there. Mm. So we're doing Isla Month, do you? And we're drinking Lagavulins. Um, do you prefer peated over, say, sherried, or what? Do you have a favorite style of of Scotch whiskey? Uh, at the moment, uh, I'm, I've got a preference to sherry, but okay. I do like a good a good peated. I've had some nice peated ones. See, this is this is wonderful. Right, uh, this is, and I've got right. a couple of really nice art bags. Got a little taste, a little fondness for art bag. Yeah, I'm a big uh, I'm not such a fan of Lafroig. Don't know why I've not gotten to Lafroig yet. As I say, I'm early days with Pete Perry. Um, but I've had, I've had some nice ones. Uh, as I say, art bag. And I like it. A bit of habit as well. There's a couple of nice distilleries. Um, but I tend to find my, I've got a bit of a sweet tooth. So I tend to be heading towards the sherries, I think, at the moment. And this is and, and this has some nice sweetness to it. It's I, it's got a wee bit of sweetness. This, is, this but... is really sweet as well. That's that's the beauty of this one. Yeah. And as I'm finding, I'm doing more peaks. I think sometimes even like the Lager Villain sixteen, that's a bit sweeter as well. So yeah. So I, I like the sweetness rather than I'm not a savoury person. I'm more a sweet. But this has got both. This is sweet right. and savoury. So uh, it's not so, contradicting. But for me, it depends on my mood. It's all about my mood. It's not. I like them both. But it depends about what mood I'm in. So, have you been over to Isla? I've I've never been to Isla, Eric. Oh, you gotta go. You've got one up on me. I've never I've lived in Scotland and I've never been there. Yeah. So, fish. You gotta you gotta go over there with Roy and go to a fish ale. Oh no, I'm gonna I'm gonna plan and do it uh, at some point. Um, I know um, Max, the whiskey bloke. He's kind of contacted me to try and do something in March. 
Okay. So I may be looking if he's heading towards Ireland in March, then I might I might join him to that trip. Okay. So yeah, you can take a thirty minute flight in some a little tiny little plane from Glasgow, or you can take the ferry. I I like taking the ferry. It was a nice ride. Yeah, right? no, I prefer the ferry. Yeah. It, yeah, it's a little you bit longer. The bottles back away on the ferry. And if you and if you go driving over them, you can stop in. Uh, over yeah, I think I think Max drives it, so we just drive over and then park the car yeah. up and wander around the island. I think that's you what the plan is. Anyway, so you could even go. So I hope that comes off. Pardon? I hope it comes off and um, try me up with Max and the whiskey bloke on. In March, and he's maybe talking about going to Isla, so I may get a chance to go to Isla on, on March. In March, it's it's a whole nother world. It's quite an experience. I fell in love with it. Isla is Isla. I, it's almost as if Isla is different from Scotland, just because the topography, the geography, the climate, the the whiskies, the atmosphere, the feel of the place. It's just very, very. I loved the Highlands as well. Um, but it just I'd imagine cool. the whole thing, the whole place, Eric, is just whiskey. <laughs> you know, just from one corner to the other corner, it's just it's just whiskey and then whiskey in the middle. So I think the whole place is just it's just built for whiskey. Well, they do have a pizza restaurant, and, <laughs> and they got a whiskey topping on it, and a coffee shop. And the pizza okay. restaurant's called it's called Pizza. I bet there's whiskey in that coffee, <laughs> and. And the pizza shop is called – it's called Pizza, spelled P-E-A-T, uh, oh, Pizzeria. Nice. And that's in – it's in Bowmore, right down the road that's from uh, the distillery. Sounds great. Mm. So I'm using the Glen Cairn. What kind of glasses are you using? Uh, it's a Capita. Okay. I, I'm – they're similar to – the Riedel Armagnac or Cognac glasses in terms of having a stem. No, I just like the stem. I just like to hold the stem a wee bit easier. Yeah. I've got some Glen Cairns as well, just in case I need to pour something else into this. Okay. So do you have any particular – so you're more of a – right now you're more of a sherry guy than uh, than Pete, but you do like a good Pete whiskey. Do you have any particular favorite sherries, sherry whiskeys? Oh yeah, the, the Glen Goyne Twenty One is one. Oh. Uh, that's that's a big big favourite. Glen Dronach Eighteen is my that's my current favourite at the moment. I can't get enough of that Glen Dronach Eighteen. I so I, I, I be fair, I, anything from Glen Dronach is fantastic. I tasted the the Glen Goyne Twenty One at the distillery, and then I tasted it again at the Whiskey Fest. First, I'm wearing a Whiskey Fest shirt, yeah. but. You know, at a festival where you're tasting a lot of stuff, meeting a lot of people, it's not a time to have something that's just mind blowing that you just want to sit there and think about it. But well, fortunately, you're just waiting for the next one, aren't you? Yeah. So, so it was good. the good thing was it was towards the end, and so I'd already had a bunch, and I could just kind of sit down with this one whiskey, and I was listening to a lecture with uh, Dr. Don uh, Livermore with uh, J.P. Weisers, and I could kind of focus on that whiskey as he was. Uh, talk about yet yeah, that is a phenomenal drink. Have you been to the distillery, the Glen Goyne? Yes, no, I haven't. Oh, no, <laughs> <laughs> the, the, only, the only two I've done, I've only been to two distilleries, Eric. Remember, I've only been getting into whiskey for about three years. I started yeah. the two distilleries I've done is Aaron, done the Isle of Aaron, and I did Deanston with, with Roy, and um. McAllen fine and real. I started in April. Two, I got into whiskey April 2016. Yeah. And now I've been to six distilleries in Kentucky, six distilleries oh, in, in, in 20. And 20. Yeah, I don't do things half ass, halfway. Yeah, you I, go, I go guns are blazing. They're doing, I jump with both feet. Yeah, you, you're a lot older than me, so I've, I've got a lot of catching up to do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, well, I shave my hair so you can't see any gray hair. Uh, so I'm oh, I don't need to shave my ranges. I have to cut mine every week. <laughs> You're showing off. So I'll every be every week. When I lie, when I arrive in Scotland, that'll be my fifty third birthday. Yeah, wow. So July July sixth, I'll be fifty three when I land there. So how old are you? Well, you're looking well because I'm older than you, Eric. <laughs> I take it you're not going to tell me how old you are. 
I'm 55 in March. Oh, okay. So I got a couple more years. A couple more years. So I might, I might do Isla for my birthday. Oh, okay. uh, in March. Yeah, that'd be fantastic. That would be yeah. that would be a, a stellar birthday. That would be absolutely fantastic uh, to be there. Yeah, that'd be. Ho hopefully, you get some decent weather. Um, well, it, was, it was like California weather, weather last year, didn't it? It was absolutely last year. Um, yeah, so Roy had absolutely fantastic weather there, and then I had fantastic weather when I was there uh, as well. But it's it's absolutely it's fantastic. So in terms of Isla whiskeys, I know we're like I'm in love in this Lagavulin. Um, is there a particular Isla you think you tend towards? Isla Lagavulin. Oh, the Lagavulin. Okay. Well, I've got three favorites on Isla. I've got Lagavulin. Aunt Beg and Bunahan. Okay. Those are, I haven't That's tried it. a Kill Homan yet, so I'm waiting to try a Kill Homan. Okay. Yeah, uh, I think I'm, I'm, I'm probably in agreement with you. Those are three, my, those would be my three favorites as well. Yeah. But I've probably, I've just not tried enough of the others. Um, Brooke Laddie, I've not tried a lot of. And Kalila, I think Kalila is just one of those. It's, it's just a nice, it doesn't excite me enough, Kalila. Um, yeah. But it's yeah, it's more, of, more of a blender. Uh, you know, I think about 90% of it goes into blends. Um, 95. But, right. I googled it. 95%. Wow. Um, 6.5 million liters a year. So are you still into uh, collecting and for... for, for uh, I'm dabbling a little bit. Pardon? Yeah. I'm dabbling a little not as much. I'm drinking more now than I've. <laughs> I'm spending too much money buying it to drink now. Is whereas, yeah. whereas uh, as I see, I sold. I, I sold a load last year at auction. I put a big. I put a whole load of bottles at the auction last year. Well, I noticed you have. It looks like an art big dark cove behind you. Yes. Very nice. I have, I've got two of those. That's my second bottle. Uh, okay, right. I see. Yeah, there's another one, and then there's an art big in the middle there. No, I've got the. That's my second bottle of Dark Cove, but I'm, I'm persevering whether they open this one or not now. So, um, the one next to it's the 20 something. So, so that, got, that's really a collection. I've got two of them as well. I have one right there, and then another one right there. And this one's open. Yeah. I'm about mm, just below the shoulder on it. And then this one has not been opened. That's now selling for. Getting close to five hundred dollars here now in in the United. This one, your Dark Cove. Yeah, the Dark Cove yeah, CR. No, uh, this is the problem you have now, Eric, with with bottles. And this is what I was finding with collecting and drinking. Some of the bottles now, that what's in that bottle is nowhere near worth what you would get for it on the secondary market. I've got a, I don't know if you can see. I've got a Macallan Number One Edition here, which when I bought it. It was £79, right? And last month's auction, one of them went for £1,100. Wow. So that, that bottle now, I know that will never get opened. Right. And I think all that, those, all those Macallan editions, like what I tend to do with them is when I buy one, I'll buy two of them. So I'll buy one to keep and I'll buy one to drink. Exactly. That's that's where I kind of do that's it. Where I, go I just wish I'd bought 10 bottles of the number one edition, so. The fact that it sells for five hundred dollars keeps me from drinking it. Otherwise, I'd be straight no, on. No, nobody, nobody will drink that. It's not worth drinking because it can't live up to a five hundred pound bottle, a five hundred right. pound um, bottle of whiskey. But but the th funny thing is, so in like collecting, you're talking baseball cards, uh, matchbox cards, anything that anybody, anybody collects. Is it really or a comic book, a bottle of wine? You know, yeah. Um, DRC, which is a very expensive burgundy. On release, on release is three thousand dollars for a bottle of wine. Is anything worth that much? Somebody's got money. Yeah, it's worth it to me. No, there's a gazillion other Pinot Noirs, or in this case, whiskeys that I would spend that. Let same me dollar. give you a little scenario, Eric. You know the collectors. They are doing all you whiskey drinkers a favor. Yeah. Saving all them beautiful bottles. At some point down the road, when those bottles are all finished, those collectors have got those, and those will end up on it. They'll get drunk at some point by someone. 
So I think this, the, the, although they are collecting them and holding them away, the, in future generations, those bottles will get opened, which they probably wouldn't happen. That mm. McAllen number one will eventually get opened by someone, but it could be 20 years from now. Right. Well, there's none of them left anywhere. So the other advantage is whether, you know, if I don't need the money, you could use it for trading. And you could trade Absolutely. it. You could trade it yeah. for a bottle that you can't get, regardless how much money you got. And so, if someone really wants this, and they have bottles that I would like to have, but I can't even get them, regardless of price, then that's what comes into where it gets you into a club, so to speak. You know, in a group of people who have th something worth trading. Um, yeah, I've not come across much of that. See, again, there's not a lot of people around this neck of the woods to trade with with whiskey. Um, I know some of the guys in Canada tend to do a lot of it. I know Rob and them try to they trade a lot of whiskies around. Um, but for me, I've never I've never traded a bottle with anyone. Um, I've either kept it or I've drunk it. So, uh, what if 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 people in Scotland aren't drinking their local whiskies, what are they drinking other than Iron Brew? Oh no, they still drink their Iron Brew. <laughs> but what are they I, drinking? Iron Brew comes from it doesn't matter who. Good whiskey is Eric. I'll never beat Iron Brew. <laughs> so, so what? So what are they drinking? Are they drinking beer? Are they drinking vodka? Are they drinking cocktails? No, in, in Scotland, Eric, they're drinking whiskey. Uh, I live in see, I live in Manchester, England, so here there's not so much call for the whiskey. But I've not come across. Listen, I'm I'm not saying there's nobody around here that drinks whiskey. It's just they're not in my circle. Um, but when I go to Scotland, there's lots more people in Scotland oh, okay. who okay. who'll have a dram with me. Okay, uh, but not so much down here. This is why again why YouTube came in handy because I can sit and talk to my camera and drink right. my whiskey and chat away to myself and then get some comments a few days later. So it's so it's just my way of kind of appeasing myself and enjoying my whiskey at the same time. I was enjoying it on my own. Now I'm enjoying it with yourself and some YouTube colleagues. So well, that's that's where the beauty of it. What brought what brought you down to Manchester from Scotland? Um, me and my friend came down. We got a chance of some jobs down. We got some good jobs down in England. So we initially thought we'd do it for a short. We planned to come down for a year, uh, and I'm here nearly thirty years later. So I thought we're back. I've enjoyed it. It's nice. I've married an English girl, so there's no chance of me going back now. Oh, you don't think you'd, you'd take her back up there with you? Well, she won't go. <laughs> no, she won't go, man. <laughs> even, even when I go on my visits, I go on my own now because the English they take too much stick up there. Anyway. It's, it's all banter, but they, she, she, she takes a lot of stick. I, English. I didn't understand the word you just said. Oh, okay. I'm, what I'm saying is the when I go to Scotland, I tend to go on my own. My wife won't come with me anymore because she takes, she get all the banter in Scotland. It's Scotland versus England. Oh, she just takes okay. a little bit. She gets outnumbered a little bit. So. Okay. So she's battled away and over the years and put up as much as she can. So she tends not to come up as often now. Right, right. Which helps me because I can just go and drink whiskey the whole time I'm there. So you know it's funny because there are places in the United States that are like that. If you if you go down to the south and you're from California, you don't want to have a California license plate in your car. Yeah. In the south. That's, that's, wow. It must be happening everywhere. Yeah. But I don't. It's care. always been that Scotland England thing, so it's it's not as bad as it used to be. And I'm, life's okay for me. Either. I've never had any problems down here. I think right. the Scots are just a little bit more patriotic and a little bit more. And the the English don't seem to care that much. <laughs> I think the Scots bothers the Scots more than it does the English. Except when they're playing football. <laughs> well, it's a different scenario. <laughs> I think we still get a wee bit more involved than the English do. Hmm. I think we're just a wee bit more patriotic. Okay. Don't get any upset any of my English friends. Or my Scottish friends. So um so you started your, your whiskey channel um, and just started doing videos. Um do you have any general ideas of what you want to do with it or you just whatever you're fancying or any plans? At, at the minute I'm just happy just sitting in front of the camera and just just enjoying some whiskey. Um as I say, I'm hoping to now, at the minute I was a bit erratic. I would do maybe three a week and then I would maybe do one a week and 
So now I'm, I've just done, I'm going to commit myself to doing one on a Monday. Every Monday I'll commit. Because I'm quite busy at work at the minute. So time's been a wee bit against me uh, over the last couple of months. I've just tried to fit it in wherever I can. Um, so I'm going to commit now to doing one on a Monday for definite. And if I've got more time, then I'll probably put a second one in a week. Um, and that's that's where I want to do it. I'll do one a week, maybe maybe two, and see where it goes. Well, I think you're really... The response so far has been quite good. I've been happy with the response, so... As long as you're having fun, I think I think you'll you'll do well because people here in the United States, um, we to go to the idea of going to Scotland for most people is a, is a dream, um, and so to interact with people who are from you know the motherland or the fatherland or how you want to say it, from where the juice comes from, uh, we like to listen. Uh, and interact and talk to people who are from there. So just the fact that they're from there, uh, yeah. it sort of gives you some currency. Uh, okay. And and then people will want to um, hear hear about your experience and and your love for whiskey. I I could just li- I could just listen to you know Scottish people talk. I just I listen like listening to it. You just have to listen a little bit harder. I hope everyone can understand what I'm saying. So, because I'm a little bit excited at the moment. So, <laughs> so hopefully, um, hopefully it's going down too well. You don't have to uh, delete everything. So there's a there's a movie that Roy told me about. It's called um, the Angel, Angel Shell. A lot of cussing in it and stuff like that. The Angel but, Shell. Yeah, have you seen that movie? I've seen it. Yeah, it's a fantastic movie. It's got subtitles in it because. The accent's so thick, I think Americans wouldn't understand them. So oh, put- I think the copy I've saw hasn't got subtitles. Pardon? The copy that I've seen hasn't got subtitles. It must oh, just yeah. be the copies that you're sending to America. Yeah, so the version we get here on iTunes, on, uh, yeah. it, has, it has subtitles so we can understand what people are saying. Oh, yeah. Taking a piss here. What do you do with your toes and stand back? Stand back. That's right. You heard me. Stand back. If you say so, pal. Oh shit. Yeah, no. I think, I've got it on DVD and it's there's no subtitles, but oh, okay. I can understand why they put subtitles in. Well, the first thing I was watching, I was like, I thought it the because you can turn subtitles on or off on some videos. So I was messing with the settings. I was like, "What are they? What have they got the subtitles on?" I'm like, "No, that's next into the movies. No, we can say what they're saying." So I'm used to talk, you know, used to hearing Roy, which I can hear just fine, and other people just fine. Uh, but then I was like, "Okay, that's pretty thick." Uh, so I was it's funny just before we went live. Uh, just before we went live, I was watching um, or before we record, recorded. I was watching the History Channel. Uh, people it's called like the swamp people or whatever people who live down in uh, New Orleans down in the, in the bayou and they're hunting yeah. alligators and their subtitles they're, they're Americans speaking English American English but they have subtitles because the the um, wow. Louisiana accent is so accents yeah, the accent is so thick, you can't understand them. Water today. Why? Oh, uh, damn, mosquitoes in here bad, and them women police give me some deep mosquito spray, and I was in them drawers, and I sprayed it on my begonies, and it, it, it hair left them, man. They all swole up like they, they burned them or something. <laughs> and the meat fell off. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Uh, and, and yet they're Americans. How did you find the accents in Scotland when you went over to Isla? How did, they've got a different accent. How did uh, you find that? It was just fine. I, I never had any problems understanding anyone. So that yeah. was fine. That was fine. Just so, you can't understand. <laughs> just, a, just a wee bit. So I had a, so I actually had a neighbor. Um, we lived next door to each other. They now have like 10 kids. So he moved where he, they, his wife was from Texas. He was from Hamilton, Scotland. Um, and then they started having a lot of kids. So they moved somewhere where they, they, could, they could afford the land. 
So they moved down to they moved down to Waco, where his, his wife was from. And sometimes he would say something, and I would look at her, and then she would interpret for me oh, wow. <laughs> what he said. What he said, because it was pretty thick. Particularly if you talk real fast. So if you get excited uh, or very energetic, you talk really fast. Oh, it's when, when the Scotch do get excited, it, it speeds up. Yeah. So the words get faster but shorter. So they kind of cut them off. <laughs> right. As right. in mid sentence. So the words are getting shortened. But my wife does a bit of that at the moment. <coughs> she kind of translates for me. Okay. Yeah, because when the, my English relatives and stuff down here, then she does a bit of translating. And then there's a time delay between the time someone says something and then the time you understand it. And then if you've had a few drams, it gets even more yeah. challenging. If yeah, someone well, had a few I've saved myself. I've only had one dram before we came on. So well, you've got to go, you've got to go to Isla and you've got to do the cellar. It's not a tour. You got to do the 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 cellar or the barrel room um, tour. Like it's not you're not going anywhere. Um, you're in the cellar room, and Ian. And now my mind just went blank. Is when he's a short little guy, gray hair. He's been working there for like over forty years. Last name is Mick something. I, I now I feel bad. I'll put him here. Anyway, you want to go there well before he retires because he is a hoot. Really, 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 really funny. So you want to go to Lagavulin and you want to visit. You want to go and Lagavulin. Yeah, yeah, Lagavulin. No, yeah, I'll visit Eric. I just I'm hoping to do it this year at some point. So you're gonna want to anyway. So you're gonna want to go. You're gonna want to do go to the cellar tour when Ian is running it, and you'll taste about six different casks straight from the cask. It's yeah. absolutely fantastic. You'll have a great time. I'm looking forward to that pizza. <laughs> With some iron brew. So, outside of whiskey, do you, is there anything else you enjoy? Um, I mean, cause like, so I've been into wine for twenty years. You know, started in the late nineteen nineties, and then just April two thousand sixteen, got into uh, whiskeys. Um, so, I'm not into beer. Um, is there anything else you're into other than uh, say whiskey? Well, for me, the minute because it's because I'm I've only been doing it for the last couple of years. It's all everything's whiskey at the moment. Uh, right. I think my wife's getting a little bit fed up because everywhere she turns, there's cabinets turning up. So I'm buying new cabinets and there's bottles turning up every other day. Um, but for me, it just seems that it's all pretty much whiskey at the moment. So uh, look, I'm looking look whiskey. That's that's where I am just now. I'm looking behind you. Know, transformation from the wine to the whiskey then how are you balancing that um so i i was not planning on getting into, i was not planning on getting into whiskeys i was studying for the wset diploma wine and spirit education wine and spirit educational trust diploma which is two years six units one unit is on business one's on production uh one unit's on table wine one's on fortified wine one's on sparkling wine and then one's on spirits and so I had no interest in spirits, but as a required part of the program, so I thought, oh, well, you know, I'll just do this thing on spirits, move on, get it done, and then go back to my wine. And so the, the exams consists of essay exams plus blind tasting. So I was thought, well, I'll buy some minis, you know, uh, of, of various spirits, rum, uh, vodka, gin, uh, and so forth, and whiskeys. And I had them a Colin 12, and I was like, wow, this is fantastic. Um, and that's what got me to go in another direction to get into whiskeys. But I rarely drink. I'm finding myself rarely drinking wine. I have some wines I want to review. Um, I have some other wine related things I'm doing for my wine channel um, related to a movie called Psalm that came out. Um, but really, my mindset, because I've, I've tasted everything from around the world already. Uh, whiskey is something for me to explore, uh, something new. Well, so uh, many whiskeys, Eric. So many to explore. Oh yeah. Um, so that's why my primary interest right now is just focused on. on so how on how are you balancing the wine and the whiskey at the moment? Then are you doing more wine or more whiskey just now? About ninety nine percent whiskey. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> that's unanimous, then, eh? Oh yeah. So I have I have whisk I have a wine cellar here, wine cellar here. I have smaller wine cellars over there. I've got plenty of very high-end wines. I get invited to wine events all the time. Um, I do work on the side. I've been doing consulting for wine, California wineries. In fact, I was this last week I was drinking Pinot Noirs 
but it wasn't for review or just sitting around drinking. Um, I, write, I do an analysis of it um, and then give my notes to the winery and then they make changes. This is the wine before it gets released. Um, so I still do side work on, on, on wine, but um, I'm not spending any time studying wine or anything like that. Although I've got some wines I want to do, uh, but it probably won't be till February, March or something like that. All my time spent on whiskey. Not bad. The way. <laughs> it's all about the whiskey. And remember, Eric, the pleasure's in the sharing. Absolutely. Well, that's what I wish. I wish I had a community here to share with. Um, wow. uh, this is what YouTube's doing. Yeah. Well, they take they take little samples, put them, they get bottles, put them in samples, put them in packaging to wrap them up, go to the post office. All that's a, I don't mind giving away whiskey. That's not the issue. It's the hassle of trying to get it in the mail, and then some yeah. of the people you want to mail things to. Uh, you know, the Canadian customs might end up grabbing it or something like that. So it's Absolutely. not. No, I've just sent a few samples to Canada and I'm, it's touch and go at the minute whether they'll get through or not. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'd rather just fly up there and bring some bottles with me in my luggage, put it in my dirty underwear and bring it up there. Wow. <laughs> uh, bring it up on the plane and give it away that way. <laughs> <laughs> That's So I brought back 24 bottles from Scotland. 24? Uh, yeah. Ten, wow. ten, 10 of them. Nice. Have you opened uh, them all yet? Uh, a lot of them, but not all of them. Some of them I'll be opening this next on, on during Isla Month. A few Are of them. Are you going to keep some? Um, I have duplicates of a few, um, of a, but just a few. And I've given away a couple of bottles. Um, but, you know, I'll be returning to Scotland and bringing back more. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm collecting, drinking opening faster than i can drink through them it it it's it, it, so it gets to be a bit much you know because i have more there so i what what are those bottles up on the top behind you those are all kill cannon that's a are those all open or closed they're all closed because what what they are eric is when kill cannon started they did a three-year-old and then every year after that they, they call it the work in progress range i don't know if you've ever heard of it Mm -hmm. but it's called work in progress and then they started with a three-year-old they did a four-year-old and then they did they started doing a sherry cask and a bourbon cask so five six seven and eight were all they did one sherry and did one bourbon bourbon so there's a it's a collection now and that's that's the full range of them okay um so did you buy those when you were in the uh flipping i guess so I'm in the collecting business when i bought them yeah collecting business or like here in the United States, people buy properties like houses. They buy a house, they fix it up, and then they sell it. So they're buying houses and homes and properties. I've done a little bit of that, but it takes oh, a lot. Of the, the secret of this game, Eric, is just wait, and it's just six and waits. So it's not a case of some bottles you can flip, um, but some of them you need to sit on them. So five, six, seven, eight, maybe even ten years. Yeah, and that's where you'll reap the benefit of that. Yeah, wine's the same way, and your biggest buyer will be restaurants. So, and you, but at that point, in order to make do anything well with it, you need to buy cases and cases. So, you're essentially cellaring and aging the wine for them. And then, yeah. when it's, you know, got, say Bordeaux, particularly, you buy 2015 Bordeaux, which is a stellar vintage, but it's too young to drink now. They will want to start drinking them in 10 years. So, if you bought a bunch of cases, sell them correctly. And then uh, restaurants, because they have a limited space for inventory, then when it comes time, hey, you, you tell the restaurant, this is what I've got, and then they'll pay you a premium. Uh, and since like, you're being paid. Am I right in thinking that wine gets better as it gets older? It de Not universally. Some, no. some wines you want to drink young. Some wines need 10 years. Uh, it depends on the tannins and the acidity. So, but not not universally and not all wines are are made to the wines you get at your grocery store are not intended to be aged those are pop you know you age them from the time you go leave the grocery store to the time you got home that's how long you age it and then you pop a cork and drink it with dinner i see i always thought that wine if you kept it longer it, it, it did stuff in the bottle i think it got older and as it get older does it get any ticket does it get any older in the bottle then oh yeah 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 it ages um it definitely ages um 
wines with high amount of tannin and high acidity will age and progress. So there's basically three different categories of, of, of the flavors here, what you get from wine. One is the primary, which you get from um, the grapes uh, and, and what comes from the land. Second is what you get from secondary, is what you get from production. And then third is tertiary, which you get from aging. And so whiskeys are, are same primary, secondary, and tertiary. The primary would be uh, the grains, um, you know, what, because there's, there's 10 basically approved st strains of barley. And then if you're doing a blended whiskey, so th th that'd be the primary elements and your water source. Um, then from what comes from production would be everything from length of the line arm, the, the, the angle of the line arm, uh, the how fast you do your fermentations, and everything else that goes into production. And then the tertiary would be the time spent in cask in aging. Uh, and so you get different elements from each one of them, different characteristics uh, to each one of them. So it's it's similar to the way wine does, except your aging for whiskey is in the barrels, where yeah. a lot of your aging for wine is going to be in the bottle because they're only going to spend a year to year and a half in oak. Uh, the rest of the aging is in bottle. Uh, right. So right now people are going, oh, no, Eric is talking about wine. Let's get back no, to whiskey. No, no. Yeah, let's talk about Ayla. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So when you're so, visiting back, Eric, are you going back to Ayla? Well, I went, when I was there, I went to eight, I went seven of the eight distilleries. So I didn't. I walked around Boomore, but I didn't go in. And then Ardenhoe is still under construction. Yeah. So right now my plan is I'll be in the Lowlands, Campbellton, Speyside, and Orkney on my next trip. Uh, and then 2020, I'll go to Campbellton, spend a week uh, working, and then maybe go back to Isla. Um, I don't know if Ardenhoe will be open by then. But so yeah. basically, I go to Campbellton, go to Isla, visit Boomore visit Ardenhoe if it's open and then go up to Jura. Um, so, and so that would be my, the second week is I would visit uh, all, all those. So if you don't make it over, if you, if you don't make it over uh, to Isla this year uh, or even again next year, uh, you can meet up with me and we can take, take no, a trip. Absolutely. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be at some point. Ho hopefully it's in June, isn't it? June you're coming? Uh, July. July 4th? July, yeah. Definitely, definitely in July, Eric. I'll make a point of meeting you in July. Okay. Uh, they'll probably be somewhere in. Are you headed up to Glasgow? Oh yeah, I, yeah. I fly into Glasgow. I fly into yeah. Glasgow. Uh, I'm guessing I'll meet up with Roy. I don't really have anything yeah. planned for my first day. I, I get there like ten to thirty Absolutely. in the morning. In Glasgow. So, probably just hang out at a at a whiskey you might bar. Be a and brew. Yeah. <laughs> so um, whiskey and I am brew. It's fantastic. So, have you have any other ideas or anything you're doing you want to do for your channel, or you want, is there anything you want to tell people about your channel? No, I just I'm just happy in it, just sitting down and talking about whiskey. If if it goes for, because I'm only three months in. Right. Um, at the minute, I'm only doing the odd video. I'd like to do more of this stuff, I think, because I, I need. To, I'm not techno gifted, so I think I need to learn a bit more about the techno side of it um, before I do more of this. Right. But that's probably where it'll end up. I'll end up doing lives and that kind of stuff. But in a minute, I'm just happy just sitting down, talking to people. And if people are happy to listen, then great. If they're happy to subscribe, then all the better. Um, but if they don't, then I'm still happy doing my whiskey. Yeah. So um, there is a huge curve to learning lighting and the camera and the editing and the sound and 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 then YouTube is constantly evolving, so try to stay on top of that. But I, I would say this is it, being part of the whiskey community. Just ask, and people Absolutely. people will help. Um, I'm more than willing to help. Um, and then not only in terms of helping directly, but finding resources. So like Bill Whiskey Dictionary, he turned me into Nick Nimmin. So I turned to him. But anything you need to know, all you have to do is. Type in how to do this, whatever the this is, and somebody yeah. made a video on how to do that. Absolutely, uh, I'm not super technical either in terms of computer stuff, and I've but I've been learning a lot um, and trying to improve my skill, editing skills, lighting skills, on all the rest of that. 
but um, yeah, don't be so don't hesitate to ask. Uh, if, if I don't know something, I'm sure I can find someone who does and uh, and, and help you along. Unless you um, to do it. Just building up the confidence to sit in front of a camera at the beginning. So the, the, tech, the technological side is what's coming now. So I'm feeling more confident in front of the camera now. So now it's just a case of, of building up the tech and building up, you know, yeah. the back of the business. So that's a yeah. whole process for me. It'll take a while, but yeah, I'll get there. Yeah, and don't stress. Just have a good time. Don't stress me. So we, us Scots, don't stress. <laughs> oh, I live this. I live, in, I live in the Silicon Valley. It's all about stress. <laughs> yeah. Everything is because everything has to be on the forefront of the latest technology, uh, the newest, latest thing, and everything is <laughs> move, move, move. And so it's very it's too fast. That's like London, mate. London's like that. Yeah, it's too fast. Nobody's, yeah. nobody's happy. Yeah. So that's why I drink a little a wee bit of whiskey. Absolutely. So, so we've, been like at, we've been at this for about an hour. We can keep talking half hour, but I'm going to, I'm going to, I'll stop the, uh, uh, I'll stop the recording. I, I, like, I like to keep a, a recording to about an hour because people aren't going to yeah. watch for a, longer than an hour. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the, uh, uh, the live broadcast, the, 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 the uh, recording, and then we can talk offline. Okay. I don't worry about it, doing interview stuff. So uh, in the meantime, so uh, for those who are watching this on the premiere, I want to thank you very much for watching. If you haven't subscribed to The Whiskey Friend, please do. I'll put a link to his channel uh, down below. And if you're a whiskey tuber and you're looking to have a guest on, um, then just reach out to uh, uh, my friend Alan here and uh, give him an invite because I'd really like to see him. Uh, more and more channel. So, anyhow, so uh, cheers to you, Alan. Cheers, Eric. Been a pleasure, right. mate. Thanks very much for having me on. Uh, looking forward to doing it again. I'm looking forward to seeing you in July. All right, Slange Bar. Thank you, Slange. Hey, if you like my review, be sure to check out these other whiskey videos. Hey.